church. Excited that you are here to worship with us. Let's get to our feet together and begin our time together singing. Sing now the darkness. Now the darkness fades into new beginnings as we lift our eyes to a hope beyond. All creation waits with an expectation to declare the reign of the Lord our God. And we will not be moved when the earth gives way. the silence breaks in the name of Jesus as the heavens cry let the earth respond all creation shouts with the voice of triumph to declare the reign of the Lord our God oh, and we will not be moved when the earth gives way Church, let's rejoice in this truth together. He shall reign forever. He shall reign forever. Strongholds now surrender for the Lord. Our God has overcome. Who can be against us? Jesus, our defender. He is the Lord. Let's give him uh, thanks for that truth that he's overcome. Amen. Hey, uh, take the next few seconds, if you wouldn't mind, and say hello to somebody around you this morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer together, church. God, thank you for this morning, for this time that we have to gather as a church to worship you. I pray, God, that anything we walked in these doors with, holding us back from um, being in worship to you and you alone this morning, that those things would fall uh, away, that we would be able to focus fully on you, on thanking you for uh, your mercy and for uh, your grace and for forgiving our sins, 
for conquering death on our behalf. God, in this time now, we raise uh, our voices in praise to you. We pray that you uh, are pleased with our worship, that you are glorified above all else. In your son's name we pray. sing this together. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise Hallelujah, my weapon is a melody, I raise a hallelujah, and heaven comes to fight for me. Hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah. I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah.
more. Hallelujah. Amen.
crown you king of our lives, king of this church, king of our hearts. Lord, that's our cry this morning, that we would remember that you are better than all things, all things on this earth. Lord, that when life is complicated, we can find simplicity in you, in your name. So Lord, we give you our hearts, we give you our minds. It's in your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I want to invite the boys and girls to come and join me up here in the front for the children's sermon. But boys and girls, hello there. That was quick, fast, snappy, and in a hurry, wasn't it? Hi, Mikey, how are you? Good morning. How are you guys? I love his hair. Tired. He's so tired. Can I tell him that he doesn't actually know what tired is yet? Is that okay for me to do that? Good morning, you guys. So you know we're doing the mystery box every Sunday, but the little girl who took the mystery box last week, she couldn't be here this morning. So we're gonna, she's going to be here next week, so we're going to let her bring the mystery box next week, and then we'll give it to somebody then. So I want to talk to you guys about something this morning that can sometimes be very hard to do. It's a very hard thing to do. Sometimes when someone does something that makes you angry or hurts your feelings, or somebody just really actually hurts you pretty hard. One of the really hard things to do is when they say, I'm sorry, to say, I forgive you. But Jesus tells us in the Bible, a lot of different times and in a lot of different ways, that it's important for us to say, I forgive you. And someone says, I'm sorry, that you can say, I forgive you. And that's a really hard thing for us to do, so we rely on Jesus helping us to do that. So sometimes you have to, sometimes I really do. I have to say, Jesus, please help me forgive this person because I'm really hurt by what they did. But here's what happens for us when we forgive someone. We feel better. We feel right in our hearts when we can say that we forgive someone. It doesn't mean that we are going to be friends with them for the rest of our lives always. It doesn't always mean that. It just means we don't want it to be angry with them anymore. Does that kind of make sense? And Jesus can help us with that. Let's pray together about that. Next week, we'll have our mystery box back again, okay? Let's fold our hands and say our prayer together, all right? We're going to say an echo prayer, okay? Dear Jesus, Jesus, thank you for loving us, us. and thank you for forgiving us. us. Help us us. to to forgive others, especially when it's really hard. Especially when it's really hard. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys can make your way back to where you were sitting, okay? Thank you for coming up this morning, and I'll see you next week. That's awesome. How you doing, church family? Good. Who's gangster? Why are you so fly today? Because I'm gangster. Cool. I didn't, I didn't teach him that. Okay. How y'all doing? Y'all good? Good. I'm ruining the youth. Um, hey, my name is Lo Alleman. Uh, I'm the director of Next Gen Ministry here. Uh, if that sounds kind of confusing and slightly ambiguous, it's because it is. Uh, I, I get to hang out with our church, uh, college-age young adults, and also our church has done a new thing this last year. We're starting to plant a campus ministry at UTSA, which is super fun. So during the semesters, I get to do that. And then in the summertime, I get to hang out with mostly uh, college-age kids. Uh, I needed to clarify something that happened on social media. I said, if you are a young person, then you are more than welcome to come and hang with us. And some crazy college kid said, if you're old, you can't come. And then he defined what old was. I think you're not old until you're 120. And so uh, I'm safe, but he said other things. Um, So yeah, pretty much if you're a a college age young adult, we'd love to hang out with you. Uh, Anybody post high school, and if you define yourself as young adult, then come hang. Um, Shameless plug, we're hanging out tonight uh, in the Student Worship Center at 630. Uh, Come get plugged in. Uh, If you walked in, you should have received a bulletin finding different ways to get plugged into our church, no matter who you are. Uh, There's a lot of things that are happening and what God is doing here. I wanted to point out a few things for you guys uh, and and like an invitation where you can get plugged in. Uh, So the first one is on July 9th, there is a preschool party. It's happening in the small playground. If you have any young person, I've I've been told uh, it's a massive rager. It's an amazing party. And so... 
Uh, we'd love to have you guys come with us. Uh, it would be helpful if you guys register for the event beforehand so we know who's coming. You can also email Amy Tillis for more information. So that's July 9th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, there's also a connection class on July 14th. Our connection class is for anybody who is looking to learn more about the church uh, and finding ways to get plugged in. Uh, that is happening on July 14th at 12.15 in the John Wesley room. It's over on the other side of our campus. Uh, there's also a community work day on June 29th that is happening from 9.30 to 12. We're partnering with a ministry called Strong Foundation. They're a, a Christian nonprofit here in San Antonio. They work to restore uh, families who have experienced homelessness with small children. Uh, so when Jesus invites us to be the light of the world and salt of the earth, he invites invites all of us to do that in community. And so we want to be able to do that in community uh, together here. Uh, if you are in our space, we want to know how we can also be for you. And so on your bulletin, there's a, a perforated sheet you can tear off and give us more information about you, uh, ways we can be praying for you, ways we can come around you as a community. Um, another thing that happens in our bulletins is you can see stories. And this week was kind of a big deal. Um, our, our story for this week is VBS. VBS is also a massive rager. It's a lot of uh, energy and fun and excitement. Uh, and if you missed it, or in case you want to recap, we actually have a video for you all. And so please direct your attention to the screen. That is awesome. Uh, when I was a kid, my mom used to like drag me to church. Uh, and I don't know why parents did this, but they would like, grab you by your ear. You ever been pulled by the ear before? It's a very tender piece of meat. Like you don't want to grab somebody right there. Uh, because we didn't want to come, like we had to be forced to come there. It seemed like there was a handful of kids that may have enjoyed themselves this week at church. Uh, the cool thing about VBS is we get to tell kids that this is a place for you, that God's uh, space, that God's home, that God's building is a, is a place for your welcome. And the love of Christ is a message that we get to tell children uh, because of generosity, because of the generosity of the folks here in our church, uh, as well as people like, not just like giving monetarily, but like giving their time uh, and their presence um, to tell kids that you're loved, uh, you're wanted here, and, and, and the gospel of Jesus is for you. Uh, we're about to move into our time of offering, and our prayer for this time is that God will continue to bless our generosity 
generosity with opportunity for us to serve in the kingdom. Um, also, our prayers to thank the Lord for not only what he's done, but about the future. Like, what are, what are you calling us to? And how can we uh, partner with the Spirit of God in bringing the kingdom uh, of God close? And so if you guys are willing, I'm going to pray. Um, we're going to pray over both uh, what God has done this past week, but also what he's leading us into. Father, we're thankful. We're excited that you give us opportunities to tell people that they are uh, loved and wanted and uh, that there can be life in the full here. Uh, there can be joy and fun and energy um, here and, and there can be freedom um, because you're here, Jesus. Uh, our prayer and our hope is that you would take what we give, um, take our resources, take our time, take our effort, take our presence uh, and turn it into something uh, that can draw people closer to your heart. Uh, that, that everyone would know, not just young people, but all of us would see ourselves as children of a good father that desires us to be close, that desires us to be home. Uh, we're going to pray to you, Jesus, the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
you don't judge. That you don't, when we sin, just leave us there, that you call us to something better. And not only that, but you forgive and forget that you move on from our sin. And you allow us to live freely in your grace and in your mercy. So we thank you this time this morning, God, uh, as we worship you and as we, as we listen to your word, we give it to you and we just ask that you'd be glorified and that you would work in our hearts to understand you more uh, in this time together. We love you so much and pray these things in your son's name. Good morning. My name is Lorinda. I'm one of the pastors here. I'm really glad that you're here in worship with us today. And I'm going to tell you, I'm really glad to be here this morning uh, because I almost wasn't. Uh, my husband and I left uh, about 11 days ago. We went up to Maine and we had this beautiful honor and privilege of uh, me uh, participating in something uh, with a couple here in the church that's become really dear to us. She wrote a report in fourth grade about how she'd always wanted to go to Maine, and so her whole life, that's where she wanted to go. So he took her there for their anniversary, and they renewed their vows. And so they brought the preacher with them. It was awesome. And uh, so then we traveled down the coast, the East Coast, and went to Virginia to visit our daughter and our brand new son-in-law. And so we left yesterday. I, I like to plan things out and for them to go according to that plan. But when we got to the airport and we settled in, I turned to my husband, Robert, and I was like, this is just going so smoothly. Like turning in the car, being, why did I say that? What was I thinking, Jamie? What was I doing? I don't know. But that's what I said. And then beep on my phone. And it's like, your flight has been delayed. And I'm like, okay, okay. It's good. We're good. It's all right. Then it said, your connecting flight will arrive in San Antonio Sunday at 1120 a.m., that was not okay. So I, 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 I sat there kind of shocked for a few minutes, like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Trying to think of a plan, right? And then, ding, your flight has been canceled. So I went over to the lady that sits behind the desk. I've seen the Saturday Night Live skits. I knew this was probably not going to work out for me very well. And so I went over and I said, because I just had a feeling that if I told her, I need to preach in the morning, she's going to be like, I don't care. So I said, I have a speaking engagement in San Antonio tomorrow morning. When I told our son Sam that, he's like, what speaking engagement do you have? I'm like, dude, the one I've had for the last 20 years, <laughs> preaching, right? That's my speaking engagement. So the lady says, if you can make it to gate blah, blah, in three minutes, we can get you on that plane. Did it. <laughs> That's what we did. That's what we did. And then we get to the next, we get to uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and they say your connecting flight to San Antonio has been delayed. But we were going to arrive in San Antonio in the morning hours. So I'm going to just say this to you. If I can stay awake for this sermon today, so can you. <laughs> that's how that's going to work. So I've been really looking forward to talking about what we're going to talk about today because I believe it's really important and I think it's one of the harder things that we do. And, it, and Jesus talked about it so much. And have you ever noticed that the things that seem to really matter to us the most are the things that we talk about the most? When Robert and I were early in our marriage and you know, like, and our kids were really little, we just talked about our kids a lot. And you're like, those of you that know me are like, did that change? We just, that's what we talked about. So we would tell ourselves, like, we went out to dinner or something like that. Okay, tonight we're going to go out with some friends and we're going to talk about interesting things. You know, all the things that we talked about before we had children. And we would try that. We would give it a valiant effort, the old college try, right? But one of us would always crack. You know what I mean? We'd be like, oh, we should call and check. And this is back in the day. Like, we have a group here that is from Connecticut, just drove through there this week. And they're here working with Blueprint Ministries. Hey, you guys, we're glad that you're here. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. Well, this was back in the day when you didn't text. And if that's not bad enough, there were no cell phones. What? I know. So you'd have to find what they call a landline and call and check. We, one of us would end up, we'd just start talking about the kids. And we knew, I knew I was a lost cause the night that we were with friends. And we got ready to say goodbye. And I was like, nighty night, you guys. Like, yeah, 
I'm just, this is what matters. So we look at Jesus' life and we're like, what did he spend a lot of time talking about? If you say love, that's not wrong. It's just not what we're going to talk about today. Jesus talked about love, which is sometimes hard to do, but easier than what we're going to talk about today. Jesus talked a lot about forgiveness. He talked a lot about it. And so I think that means that what we can say is that it was incredibly important to Jesus. That we know that forgiveness is ours from God when we ask for it. And that it doesn't stop there. That we accept that forgiveness and then we go and be a forgiving people. right? That we practice what we receive, that we live that out. So if you have your Bibles with you this morning, I want to invite you to turn to Matthew, the 18th chapter. We're going to be reading verses 21 through 35. This is a conversation. And one of the things I love about the stories of the New Testament is that Jesus knows how we are. You know, he just knows how we are. So sometimes when we're told what we should do or should not do, we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't, but we don't truly Catch this, wrap our heads around it, right? We don't, we don't really get it. So Jesus tells a story. He says things like, it would be like, and then when someone says that to you, it would be like this. You're like, oh, it would be like that? This is what Jesus does here when Simon Peter comes to him with a question, and Simon Peter already has his own answer. He's kind of proud of it because it goes above what he's actually required to do. Listen to this. Simon Peter comes to Jesus, and this is what he says. Lord, if another member of the church sins against me. So Peter's talking about fellow believers, right? If another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? And then he throws in his own proud answer, right? As many as seven times. Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you 77 times. Or another translation, seven times, 70 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him, and don't miss these amounts, right? One who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and his children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. Released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii and seizing him by the throat... He said, pay what you owe. And then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and he threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. But when his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. One translation says they were grieved. I think it's both. They were greatly distressed and grieved and they went and they reported to the Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, you are wicked person you wicked slave I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you and in his anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt verse 35 so my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or your sister from your heart This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray about it together. God, thank you for your word even when it's really hard. We pray this morning that it will change us. That we won't just hear and be hearers of your word, but that Lord God, through the power of your Holy Spirit, we will be doers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So I want to point out a couple of things. First of all, talents were a way to measure gold and silver. And they were worth, a a talent was worth about 6,000 times what the average person could make in one day. 
what the average person would make in their wages, a talent was worth 6,000 times that. And this man owed his Lord 10,000 talents. So many biblical scholars think that this was in the tens of millions of dollars. So catch it that there's no way he's going to repay that debt. There's no way he's going to repay that debt. When he comes before the Lord and when that master brings him in, that king says to him, this is what you owe me. And then the king says, oh, you're going to go. You're going to be placed in prison. Your wife, your children. This was common practice in that day and time. That this is how you repaid a debt. But that king had to know. And so did that man. They had to know that if he and his wife and all of his children spent every minute of every hour of every day for the rest of all of their lives working, they could not repay that debt. It was too high a sum of money. And so Jesus is trying to help us make this correlation between our sin and this man's debt. Our sin is piled so high that there's no way we, own, in our own way, in our own strength, in our own doing, can make up for that. So what this man does is he makes a pathetic offer. He says, have patience with me. And I'll repay you the debt. He is completely, 100% relying on the mercy of that king. He's relying on the mercy because he knows he can't pay that debt back. He can't do it. And I think sometimes what we do is we make some pathetic offers too. And we say, oh, you know what, Lord God, I'll just, you just have patience with me and I'll figure this out. I'll figure this out. I'll do some good deeds. I'll say some nice things. I'll, I'll do some stuff that gets me out of this condition I'm in instead of coming before God with the sin piled like high like a mountain and saying, I, I just... I'm pouring, I'm laying it all out before you, Lord God, and I'm relying on your mercy to forgive me. I'm relying on your mercy. And so listen to what this king does, what this man does. He has mercy. We just sang about that. Mercy triumphs over judgment, right? And it did in this case. The king says, he not only says, I'm not going to send you to prison, I'm going to let you go. He says, I'm forgiving your debt. I'm taking the whole thing. Now, pay attention here and take notice that that debt doesn't go unnoticed. It isn't like he ignores the debt completely, right? He takes it on himself. If it's in the millions of dollars, that kind of debt can't be ignored. Somebody's going to take that loss. Somebody's going to experience that loss. And so the king takes that on himself. He experiences that loss. He absorbs that debt and allows the man to go free. In our situation of sin, our sin does not go unnoticed by God. It is not ignored by God. But he takes that loss upon himself through his son, Jesus Christ. In Ephesians, it tells us that that's how we are redeemed through the blood of Christ. That we, our sins are forgiven. In 1 John, it, that promise is made to us that when we ask for forgiveness, God is merciful. And God is faithful and just and he will forgive our sins. And so that's what happens. Jesus uses this example. He says, this is what sin is looking like right now. It's like the guy who owed more than he could ever, ever repay comes before the master and says, have mercy on me. Have patience with me. And the master shows mercy, takes on the loss himself, and releases the man and sets him free. And wouldn't that be the perfect ending to a pleasant story? If it's like at verse 27, which is what we like to do when we read the Bible sometimes, I'll just stop right there because that was nice. But you know what? We need to not be ignoring God's word and we need to stop apologizing for what God says in his word, right? And this is what Jesus tells them, that that man who's just experienced all that remarkable grace, had all that debt removed from his life, that same man 
It says when he went out. It doesn't say days later, weeks later, months, years later. It says as he went out. So while the paint is still wet on his I'm forgiven sign, before he's even ordered the t-shirt that says not perfect but forgiven, he's already grabbing somebody by the throat. By the throat. Like seriously, dude? What are you doing? He's experienced grace beyond measure. And before he has a chance to live that out in a second set of clothing, he's already grabbing somebody by the throat and saying, pay me what you owe me. And do you notice the man used the exact same words to this man that he had just used to have his debt removed. He said, have patience with me and I will repay you. And he says, no. No. And if that sounds crazy to you, it should. Because he was violently angry over this amount of money that was about a day's wage, a hundred, a hundred days worth of one day's wage versus millions of dollars. You see the discrepancy here? And he doesn't see that? It's crazy. And he says, no. And I'm going to have you thrown in prison Well, the other people who see that, other people in the church who see that, it says that they were grieved or they were distressed by it, so they went and told. They said, this is what just happened. This doesn't make any sense. And so he calls him back to him. What have you done? He says to him, you wicked person. That seems like really harsh words to me, but I read something this week that I want to share with you about this particular um, part of this parable in the Bible. He said, the author wrote, it is a profoundly wicked thing for us to receive God's gracious forgiveness for our great sins and then turn around and withhold forgiveness from those who sin against us. A profoundly wicked thing. And if being called wicked isn't like rough enough for you, there's verse 35 right there that says he was then handed over to be tortured until he repaid the debt. One translation says tormented. And verse 35 says, so my heavenly father will do everything to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. You see, when we say that we are Christian and we say that we are followers of Jesus Christ, forgiveness is not one of those things that we can opt in or opt out. We, we, we can't do that. We can't say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian and I'm forgiven, but I'm going to opt out of that whole forgiving everybody else thing because that's hard. And you just don't know how badly they hurt me. So I'm opting out of it. It's, it's not an opt-in or opt-out kind of thing. It's part of being a Christian is what we do. And as a matter of fact, it's so important. And Jesus is talking about it that when he's asked how we're supposed to pray, he includes it in the prayer he teaches us to pray. We prayed it a while ago. You might remember when you said, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. Forgive us so that we can experience that grace and then help us go be forgiving people so that we can be expressions of that grace. Experience the grace, be an expression of that grace. It's so important to Jesus that when he's giving his life in order to redeem our lives and he asks God one thing, that thing is forgive them. Forgive them. Because they don't know what they're doing. So, If we can believe and wrap, really truly wrap our hands around that this is how important it is to God. This is how important it is to Jesus that we would be a forgiven and a forgiving people. Why is it so hard for us to forgive? And I think part of it is because we don't always understand what it means to forgive. And we get confused about what that meaning is. And people tell us things like, forgive and forget. Forgive and be friends again. Forgive and restore the relationship. And that's not always what forgiveness is. is, It's not. The the debt wasn't forgotten. 
it was just removed. We don't ignore the sin. We don't dismiss the sin. We just don't harbor anger and bitterness and resentment toward one another. And some, um, and some vulnerability here. When my oldest son was two years old, um, as the result of a broken covenant, I found myself a single person. Now, I was not a single parent because we dual parented that son. But about three years later, I truly became a single parent. And I'm very intentional about that language. No more support, no relationship, no commitment. And part of the main reason that was so painful was because of how much it hurt my child. It's one thing to hurt the bear, it's another thing to hurt the bear's baby cub, right? But I'm telling you, that was a very long time ago. And it feels like a different life even at this point. But this is the main thing that I want you to hear is that forgiveness is 100% a part of that story. And oftentimes as your pastor, when I'm preparing a sermon and I look at the scripture and I'm writing and putting down notes, I'm, I'll think, I know there are people in the church who struggle with this issue. I'm sure there are. But I don't particularly struggle with this issue. Anytime I preach on forgiveness... I'm preaching to you and to me because I struggle with this issue. It didn't come easy and it was really hard, but there's zero ill will in my heart. Can you imagine what my life would be like if I were still harboring anger and resentment and bitterness towards something that happened literally decades ago? And those are the tormentors that I believe the scripture is talking about. I wrote a couple of things down about this. When we may ask ourselves what tormentors, it's the hidden and not so hidden tormentors of anger and bitterness that eat your insides out. The tormentors of frustration and malice when someone's really hurt you, that you allow to stay there and give you ulcers and high blood pressure and anxiety and depression and migraines. It's these tormentors that make you lie awake at night on your bed and stew over every little rotten thing that's ever happened to you. It's those tormentors that really just suck the joy right out of our lives if we allow them to. Jesus is telling the people and he's telling us there's a different way and it is so much better. Mercy triumphs over judgment. And Jesus delights in mercy. And the other thing we need to never forget is that the mercy of Jesus Christ is far greater, far more than any sin that we could experience. Lewis Smedes has this, this idea that there are three levels of forgiveness. And it's important for us to remember this, that because when we stand before almighty and merciful God, we stand with a mountain piled full of sin. And we need to make a commitment to be forgiven and allow ourselves to forgive others. These are his three levels of forgiveness I want to share with you. First is to rediscover the humanity of the person who has hurt you and see them as a sinner just like you are and in need of forgiveness just like you are. We forgive others because we stand with that mountain piled full of sin and need of the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. And so we see the humanity of others. That doesn't mean we dismiss that sin. Because I want to tell you that even though there is 0%, I mean, forgiveness is a part of this story. Let me, let me say, we don't hang out together. We don't call and check in on each other. The relationship does not exist. So sometimes when we forgive someone and recognize their humanity, it doesn't mean that that relationship gets restored and they become our best friend again. You don't dismiss the sin. You just don't allow yourself to harbor ill will and anger and resentment. And it leads to the second thing that Smeed says is a part of forgiveness. And that is we surrender our supposed right to get even. 
It's just kind of in our nature to be like, you did this, so I'm doing that, and I'm getting even with you. The third is to resist our feelings. I'm sorry, to revise our feelings toward that person. To revise them. This means giving up that hatred and bitterness toward the person. It means, I believe, taking Jesus seriously when he says, forgive. Forgive. As you have been forgiven, forgive. It's a high standard, and it's impossible for us to do it on our own. If I try to do that in my own strength, my own ability, going to fail. But with God, anything is possible. Forgiveness is nothing less than a miracle of God. And it's a miracle each and every one of us desperately, desperately need. God's mercy is more for you and the sin in your life and it's more for those in your life that need forgiveness from you let's pray about that together God thank you for your gift of forgiveness and your gift of grace and mercy help us to believe it when we sing that your mercy is more help us to practice that live it God so that people aren't grieved or distressed when they see how we handle the situations in our lives when we are sinned against. We need you. We need forgiveness. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning we're going to stand together and we're going to sing. And um, you have an opportunity to respond. If you have someone that you're just working hard toward forgiving and you'd like to have someone pray with you. Kathy Ogletree will be over at our prayer station where the chairs and the candle is burning. I'll be standing here in the front if you'd like to have me pray with you. Or if there's just something going on in your life that you want prayer for, you've never accepted Christ, you want to be a part of this church, whatever it is, we'll be, we'll be here um, waiting to pray with you as we stand together and as we sing. together what love what love could remember no wrongs we had omniscient all knowing he counts not their sum thrown into a sea without bottom or shore our sins they are many his mercy is more What patience would wait as we constantly roam? What father so tender is calling us home? He welcomes the weakest, the vilest, the poor. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise for that. Sing this together. Praise the is more 
Well, we're going to sing one more song together. I hope you all are okay with that, singing one extra song this morning. We're going to thank God that he is our defender, that he goes before us. We'll sing this together. victory. 
Amen. Thank you guys very much. Yay. Awesome. Again, we're really glad that you are here in worship with us today. If you get a chance, say hello to our Connecticut friends who are here on mission with Blueprint Ministries. We're glad you're here this morning with us, you guys. As you go from this place today, our prayer for you is that you will go knowing that you are forgiven and that God is calling you to have the strength and the courage and the blessing of being forgiving to others. Go knowing that God goes with you and have a great week. Amen.